go find your body, Hector. You can't talk to Kara, Hector. I would love to go find my body. I have no idea where to even start looking for my body. Oh, I should probably, I should probably start there. Fair enough. First up on an all new Gotham tonight, Jim Gordon races against the clock to try to stop a deadly virus and Leslie Tompkins shows up and let's just say that Lee, she's got some interesting ideas about what to do about this virus. Uh, we'll just leave it at that. And Alfred sees a change in young Bruce Wayne after he's been dealing with the Court of Owls, which brings me to my comic book connect. Guys, if you want to learn more about the Court of Owls, there's no better place than to go back to the beginning. Their comic book introduction, I'm talking about Batman Volume 1 from 2011, The Court of Owls. This is the beginning of Scott Snyder and Rick Capullo's epic Batman run. You've got a young Bruce Wayne in a flashback learning a valuable lesson about being a detective when he's trying to solve the mystery of The Court of Owls. I mean, he's trying to figure out, is the reality that there's some secret group of men that have actually been ruling Gotham from the shadows since colonial times? You guys are gonna have to read that comic book to find out, and it's a good one. So Snyder, Capullo, Batman Volume 1, it is awesome. And I'm not done telling you guys about tonight's episode of Gotham. Here's another thing that I love. Detective Bullock and Alfred team up. They're gonna have to give Alfred a badge, you guys, okay? And then he's gonna be Detective Pennyworth on the case. I've got a badge, I've got a gun, and I've got my skills. I know how to be a butler, I know how to box sometimes, and I can use fisticuffs, and I'm Detective Pennyworth. I looked at the evidence, sir, and it figures out that I've a, a ruby the size of his fist. All of that happening tonight on Gotham. Except for the Detective Pennyworth stuff. That's just something that I hope happens at some point. And on the season finale of Lucifer, happening tonight, Charlotte, AKA Lucifer's mom, accidentally killed a guy. Char broiled, I should say. <laughs> That's she killed him. She did that. So Lucifer's gotta find his mom before the cops do, and they are a hunting. I'm gonna tell you what. Plus, when Dan confides in Aminadil that doing improv actually kind of helped center him, which I think is just adorable. I think that's so funny and so great. Aminadil decides, you know what? That actually might help my situation. And oh my God, he starts doing improv, you guys, and it is fantastic. You have to watch the season finale of Lucifer happening tonight. And on an all new iZombie on Tuesday night, when a DM or dungeon master dies, all of his friends that he plays Dungeons and Dragons with are suspects. Talk about 20 sided die. <laughs> I didn't come up with that. That's the name of the episode and it's actually super clever and I really love that. Look, I'm gonna be real with you guys. I'm gonna be upfront. There's a little bit of nerd shaming coming from Ravi and Clive when they first start talking about Dungeons and Dragons and that whole world. But after a visit to the comic book store where we learn that Clive is a huge fan of The Flash, what? Interdimensional crossover next season, guys, come on, come on! The team decides to actually sit down and play a game of Dungeons and Dragons to help solve the case with Liv as the mm, dungeon master, and guess what? They get super into it. There's nothing better than seeing all of your friends play Dungeons and Dragons, and that's what's happening on iZombie on Tuesday night. Whoa. Critical hit. So guys, that's our DC TV lineup for the week, but guess what this weekend is? Wonder Woman is opening in theaters. Gotta be sure to go check that out. It's gonna be epic. And once you've seen it and you want more Wonder Woman, we've got you covered. No better time than to go check out the classic Wonder Woman TV series, available complete series on DVD or digital HD. It is awesome. Man, look at her jump, kick, kick, punch. Dang, look at her spin. Oh, Wonder Woman. Nothing better than that action-packed Wonder Woman TV series. And don't forget to go see Wonder Woman this weekend in theaters. All right, y'all, it's time for the Q&A portion. Last time I asked you guys, who from any DC TV show do you think would make a great president? And y'all answered, here we go. Jeffrey Rosario says, I think HR would be a good president because he's gonna give free coffee to everyone. Bob Jones says, Eobard Thon's alternate reality was pretty well made. He even did things that were beneficial to the public, like fix the ozone layer. He has my vote if he ever ran for president. And then a bunch of people under him were like, don't, he's evil, don't vote for him. Jonas Genvila says, The Flash, because he could solve problems really fast. That's true, and if he messes up, he could fix problems really fast. So, you know what, don't, Barry, don't. Stop messing with the timeline, Barry. Don't do, don't do it, don't fix your problems. You gotta live with it, you made your bed. And lastly, Elizabeth Isham says, Cat Grant for Prez. She's tough as nails, so she'd make a great POTUS who wouldn't be phased by all the superpowered craziness. And who knows, Jimmy's kind of running her media empire right now, so maybe becoming the next president was her plan all along. Whoa! I feel like a, like a dad right now. Hey, you, hey, that's a good one. It's a great comment. That's it for this week, guys, but after these episodes air, be sure to comment below and let us know what you thought. There's literally no wrong answer, unless you're commenting about Wheel of Fortune, which is technically not a DC TV show. But other than that, literally no wrong answer. So go ahead, go nuts. See you guys next time, bye.